Kelly again. So we just talked about Lewis dot structures, right? And we followed the steps. It's very straightforward. If you have more electrons than you need, you throw them in the middle. If you don't have enough electrons to make everything happy, you add double or triple bonds. Now when we start adding in double or triple bonds, sometimes there are some tricky choices we have to make. There are more than one structures that use the right number of electrons and make everyone happy. So which one do you pick? Which one is closest to how the true molecule is arranged? Now in order to figure that out, we use something called formal charge. Formal charge is kind of similar to oxidation state, but it is not calculated the same, so you cannot think of them as the same. Formal charge helps us decide which of the two possibilities or three possibilities is the most um, true to reality. Right? Formal charge is how we do that. For example, in Lewis structures, we said that for CO2, all right, if we follow the steps, we find out that with four electrons here plus the 12 we get from here, we get 16 electrons. And if we try to do our structure with single bonds, it does not work. Now the way I showed it to you is like this. We have two double bonds. We put two lone pairs on each oxygen. Now this structure has the same number of electrons as this structure. Make sure you can feel this right here. So let's count. We should have 16 in each. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And over here we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And in both cases, all atoms are happy. They all have a full octet. They're fully stable. Now remember, on the AP test, don't call anything happy. They're not people. They don't have feelings. We're calling them stable. Everything is stable. Everything has a normal gas configuration. Oxygen here has 2, 4, 6, 8 on both sides. Carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8. Now over here, it's the same. This oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8 electrons. Carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8. And this oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8. So everyone's happy in both structures. So why do we always draw CO2 this way and never this way? And the answer is formal charge. By the way, this does like to show up as a question on the crew response. They love to give you two structures, ask you to pick which one is more accurate, and give an explanation. When you're choosing between two different structures that are both full octets and they both satisfy all the requirements, the only way to figure out which one is the better is through the formal charge. Now there's a formula to calculate the formal charge of an element in a molecule. And here is the equation. Formal charge equals, I'm right, it's from my computer, so sorry, I'm not staring at you. Number of valence electrons minus number of electrons in the structure. And for this, it's a little bit different. Usually when we count how many electrons are on an atom, you count two, four, six, eight. Now for formal charge, each bond only counts as one. So you're gonna kind of cutting those bonds in half to figure out this number. So really, if you count up every, this is gonna be all lone electrons plus bonds. Each bond counts as one electron. So on oxygen right now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons from these two bonds. So for this oxygen, we would count this number as six. Does that make sense? Hopefully. For carbon, carbon has four bonds. We put the number four here. We do not count it as eight. We only count it as four. Over here, this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. Can you see that? So if we're calculating the formal charge, oxygen has usually six valence electrons. We're going to subtract the number of dots and lines, basically how many there are. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six minus six equals zero. So the formal charge for oxygen is zero. Okay? We're going to try the same for carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons minus one, two, three, four things on carbon, again, is zero. And this oxygen is going to be the same as this one. We have six valence electrons minus six things, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero. So in this structure, all atoms have a formal charge of zero. Okay? Let's try this one over here. This oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things on it. Usually it has six valence electrons 
minus those seven things equals a negative one formal charge. Okay, this carbon has four valence electrons minus one, two, three, four things. It's still zero. This oxygen usually has six valence electrons minus one, two, three, four, five things. This gives me a positive one formal charge. So let me show you that. Okay, so it's really the number of electrons on it in the structure, counting each bond as one, or you can think about it as how many things are on that atom. We count two dots and three lines, so it has five things on that atom, okay? Now the key for formal charge, this is what we want. The best structure has most things zero. Actually, I'm gonna write more zeros is better. Just from that alone, let's go find which one has zeros. Over here, we have zero for carbon. Carbon has zero, okay. But on the other side, on this structure, oxygen is zero, carbon is zero, and this other oxygen is zero, everything is zero. The more zeros, the better your structure is. All right, because basically what it's saying is that it, more, it matches more the regular configuration of that electron, or of that atom. Okay, so things want to have formal charges of zero. It's more stable that way. So this is a more stable structure than this is because these oxygens both have non-zero formal charges. Now sometimes there are structures where it is inevitable, inevitable, to have a formal charge that's not zero somewhere. And if that's the case, you want to have negative formal charge on more electronegative atoms. Okay. Sometimes there's a structure where both options of the structure have, say, a positive one and a negative one somewhere. So then the question is, where do you put those? Remember, we learned about, please raise your hand, we learned about the trend for electronegativity. We did learn that. It was covered by a periodic trend. We just learned that. As we go left to right on the table, electronegativity increases. So if you have for example, OF2, this structure I don't think needs any. It's all going to have zeros anyway. But if there were going to be formal charges, you would really want a fluorine to have the negative one, not the oxygen, if there was a choice. Because fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen. So we put the negative formal charge on the electronegative atom. So those are the two things. These two things. These two things make one structure better than another based on formal charge. So if you have two options for structures, all right, you check the formal charges. The more zeros you have, the better your structure is, the more stable it's going to be.